Hi, my name is Nick Francis and a big welcome to the Pace Study from me as well. Uh, as Chris uh, said, we are very, very grateful for your help and support with this uh, important landmark study. Uh, so Chris has talked to you a bit about the background uh, of the PACE study. I'm just going to focus a little bit more on the CRP or C-reactive protein. As you probably know, uh, CRP is an acute phase reactant. It's a protein which uh, uh, goes up in the bloodstream in response to inflammatory responses. And uh, it particularly rises in response to bacterial infections or severe bacterial infections. Uh, a systematic review of biomarkers for uh, COPD exacerbations looked at 36 biomarkers and found that CRP was the best biomarker for predicting uh, response to uh, COPD exacerbations. And um, currently, uh, usual clinical practice is to, to use uh, clinical criteria to assess the likelihood of a, a bacterial infection. Um, so increased sputum purulence, increased sputum volume, and increases in shortness of breath. And these criteria were first developed by uh, Antonison and uh, are known as the Antonison criteria. And uh, the more of those three features that you have, the increased the, the risk or chance of, of, the, infect, of the, the exacerbation being caused by a bacterial infection. And so current guidelines recommend using antibiotics when uh, these criteria, more of these criteria are present. Um, and these criteria are predictive of bacterial infection and benefit from antibiotics, but they are not very predictive. And uh, the uh, uh, prediction can be increased by using CRP. Uh, it's been shown that the area under the curve of prediction uh, for, for benefit from antibiotics increases by adding in CRP. Um, CRP has been used in a number of hospital studies of uh, COPD exacerbations and uh, been found to predict benefit from antibiotics as well as predicting pneumonia. And also, as Chris mentioned, in a primary care study that used uh, uh, antibiotic uh, versus placebo, we found that those with a low CRP, with a CRP less than 40, didn't benefit from antibiotics. So there's good reason to think that CRP is an important predictor of uh, benefit from antibiotics. So um, uh, in the uh, PACE study, what we're asking uh, you to do is for patients that are randomized to using the CRP to, to measure CRP. And uh, this will give you a uh, reading. Um, and uh, the higher the CRP level, the, uh, the greater the risk of bacterial infection. But it is a guide, it's not a black and white thing, and uh, we, it's important that you do continue to use clinical judgment as well. So uh, that includes uh, taking into account the patient's underlying health status, both the severity of their COPD, so those with grade 3 and 4 COPD are more likely to, uh, to warrant more uh, in intensive treatment, and those with uh, underlying health problems or who are more systemically unwell are more likely to, to warrant treatment. Um, and also taking into account your own clinical assessment of the patient. So uh, CRP is a tool to be used in addition to clinical assessment. So what we're recommending in terms of the guidelines is that uh, if the CRP is less than 20, and remember in the other study it was patients less than 40 we found hadn't benefit, so we're taking a conservative approach here, we're saying if it's less than 20 then antibiotics are unlikely to be beneficial. Now again that's unlikely, it's not absolute, but uh, you know those patients who have low CRPs, particularly if the exacerbation has been going on for more than 24 hours, if it's in the first 24 hours of the illness the CRP level may still be going up, but if they've had an exacerbation that's been going on for 24 hours or more, then it's very unlikely that they're going to benefit from antibiotics. Conversely, those patients with a high CRP, and we're saying over 40, then the, the chance of antibiotic benefit is significantly increased. That's not to say that everyone with a high CRP has to be treated with antibiotics. Again, use your clinical judgment. If you think the patient is very low risk and you wouldn't normally have treated them, then you might want to not treat them and just keep a careful eye on them. But those with a higher CRP, you want to try and understand why that might be raised. Are there other reasons why you might have a, a, an inflammatory response? Those who are in the middle, in the 20 to 40 range, um, th th that's where you really need to use a bit more clinical judgment. So uh, the key 
uh, marker that helps to predict uh, antibiotic or bacterial infection is sputum purulence. And so in this group, you know, using the purulence, the color of the sputum is really going to be important. Uh, that being said, a few key important points to, to bear in mind. Um, patient reported sputum colour isn't always reliable, so if possible try and get a, a specimen to look at the colour yourself and uh, compare it to the, uh, uh, the chart um, if you can. Also, um, ask the patient about change in colour. Some patients might have yellowy sputum all the time, um, and if they show you yellow sputum, that's not a change for them. So that's obviously less concerning. So it's not just the color at the moment, it's whether there's been a change in color of the sputum. And bear in mind that sputum purulence can also uh, increase, you can get purulent sputum in response to viral infections. So purulent sputum is not a definite indicator of bacterial infection, but it is um, something that is, is useful in, in assessing patients. So just to summarize again, of CRP less than 20, Antibiotics are unlikely to be beneficial. CRP 20 to 40, they may be beneficial and you need to use clinical judgment to assess that. And if CRP is greater than 40, then they're likely to be beneficial, but again, use your clinical judgment. So uh, that's how we'd like you to use the test, um, and uh, we hope that it will uh, help guide your treatment, and uh, we hope that you will uh, find it useful. Um, and. Uh, Hopefully the results of this study will really help to uh, improve patient care uh, and improve the management of patients for, for primary care clinicians. So thank you once again and um, goodbye.